Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here and uh, we're now going to cover the uh, cruiserweight fights at the weekend uh, Dale's a bit of an expert on this What do you think Dale about the, the cruiserweight fights this weekend? You think they're pretty good? Yeah, I think they're excellent fights, I think they're very yeah. evenly matched fights um, yeah. It has gone a little bit under the radar a little bit this second season of the Cruiserweight tournament. I think yeah. because of it being so quickly after the first one and there being no world total belts in the tournament. Yeah. But let's just yeah. appreciate it for what it is and that's, yeah. that's some bloody good fights. I think the two that are on this weekend are close 50-50 fights that could go either way. I've got my preferences on who I think will win, leaning towards Brady and Tabiti. But like I say, let's just kick back and enjoy two good fights on Sky Sports for a change and what? on a non Eddie Hearn promotion. Yeah, I'm just about to say that, Dale. <laughs> what do you think about the Sourlands muscling in on Sky? I mean, Eddie Hearn said he doesn't share the dates with anybody and he's got an exclusive. Do you think that Sourlands slinking in on Sky and getting dates, do you think that they've given Eddie Hearn a piece of the action? Well, we know that Eddie Hearn's been struggling to fill the dates for a while now, um, so this is obviously more more for that, isn't it? It's more to, to get those dates filled. Yeah. He's throwing on all sorts from the zone, but how many are actually his exclusive promotions? Yeah. I'd say less than half now. Oh yeah. Definitely less than half. But let's just stick to the boxing anyway and the two yeah, fights. Yeah. Um, they are great Brady's, fights, aren't um, they? I seen a good tweet on Twitter a few few weeks ago it was who, who's the most underrated fighter in world boxing today and I actually said that I think Bradis is probably that guy I think he's only lost one fight and he pushed Usyk all the way in that fight a fight which had he had it gone to Bradis wouldn't have been the biggest uproar ever although I felt Usyk won it was a very very competitive fight a, a, a fighter that Tony Bellew ducked was his mandatory at the time weren't he yeah Mar Mar Maris Bradis um, Gravaki as well, got a guy with a good resume, uh, first fought to beat Hook Werner when Hook had 13 successful defences, uh, Gravaki was the guy who put him to, put him to sleep as well didn't he, uh, that, that'll be a good competitive fight, both fighters can punch, both fighters can fight on the back foot, um, but I, I, I think Bradys will prevail, especially with it being in Riga as well, uh, Bradys on home turf to get the nod on points for me. Right, so you're going to go for Bradis, 25 and 1, 18 KOs, to be Glaunaki, 31 and 1, 19 KOs, yeah? Yeah. Right, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for Bradis as well on that one. What do you think about Dortikas against Tabiti? I'm going to go for Tabiti on that one. I'm also going to go for Tabiti yeah, as well. Tabiti I think, um, although the odds are favouring Dortikas, I think mm. they're, they're, they're overestimating his power a little bit. Yes, the guy can punch, but yeah. yes, the guy also got absolutely iced by Gassiev in a proper show real KO as well. Um, yeah. I think Tabiti, although he hasn't got the resume of probably the other three guys that are in fights this weekend I think technically he's a very good fighter and again I think he potentially might force a stoppage later on in the fight as well um, it's not very often that you actually get Americans at this way is it? Um, no it well, not no, in no. recent times anyway at yeah. the top of the game obviously I know you know many people regard Holyfield as the greatest cruiserweight of all time yeah um, but I think since then really the, has there actually been an American cruiserweight champion? There's none that spring to mind in, in recent years, is there? Cruiserweight, Latif Coyote, was that, that, that the IBO though? I don't think he had well, the uh, uh, What's um, the guy who cleans him with Tarver? Would he eat IBO? Yeah, he Cruiser. the IBF, he had an IBF title, I think. I don't, I don't think it was an IBF, I think you'd have, to, you'd have to check that. But I don't, Steve Cunningham, was he a Cruiserweight champion? He would have been the last one, wouldn't he? Yeah, he was. He was the guy who uh, had the IBF 
when I had the other three belts and they always say hey was the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world but he was never undisputed was he because he never had all four belts yeah you know he had the ring WBC WBO and WBA but he never had uh, the IBF did he mm. Tarver I'm sure did have one I'm sure he did IBO IBO um, yeah he did oh, there was a lot of heavyweight he had the IBF up when he beat Clinton once, so the, it was it lies ever. Yeah. So yeah, uh, my predictions for the two fights is Brady's on points and to beat a late stoppage. Right, so you're going to go for Brady's and to beat you. You're having a bet on that deal? Um, well, pricing up this weekend's action, uh, Tyson Fury to win on points, Josh Warrington to win in round 7 to 12 in the group round betting and to beat it to win outright as the treble pays 54 to 1 on Skybet and that's where 10 pound of my money's going this weekend so 10 pound so if you get if you pick it's just from two fights or three fights three fights so you're going to go Warrington KO Warrington round 7 to 12 so KO yeah Warrington 7 to 12 KO Bradis I've left that one out I think that's a really tough fight to call on leaning towards Bradis but from a betting perspective I've left that one out. I've yeah. gone for Tyson Fury points, Warrington 7 to 12 KO, and to beat it to win. Right, and to beat it to win. 54 to 1 on Sky. 54 to 1. Have you ever had any winners on boxing? Um, more losers on than accumulators. Winners. More, yeah. more losers than winners. Well, what it is we accumulators, we try and make the we try and make the bets a bit more attractive, don't we, by jazzing them up a bit and that's where you come unstuck in it, but yeah. We all know my opinion on accumulators. Tony Bell, you ruined four accumulators on trot for me, didn't he? That's why I'm not a big fan of Tony Bell, you know, but... You know, it's one of the things, isn't it? But just before we finish, I just want to point out that Tony Bell, you still hasn't beat a champion. <laughs> and his record in world title fights is 2 and 3, you know? Yeah, he had four, four pay-per-views. And the uh, rumour has it, he could be coming back for another one. Yeah, Tony Bellew could be coming back, imagine that. Tony, how could we cope without Tony Bellew? Hey, how could we cope? I mean, get down to that last million and start thinking, hmm, I could do a bit of a top up here. Frotch looking at coming back and he's 42 in two weeks, Frotch. Bellew's still mid-30s, isn't he? He'll be back. It's just yeah. a case of when, isn't it, Dale? So, right then, peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. The Sky Show this weekend is brilliant. But also, the the Frank Warren Show is an intriguing fight, isn't it? Galahad against uh, Warrington. I'm going to go for Warrington. I'm going to go for Josh Warrington, Bradison, Tabiti. That's my accumulator bet for the weekend. Alright, no, it's going to be a TKO or this and that or what round like Dale's. Warrington, Bradis and Tabiti, but you'll not get this till after the fights anyway, but it is what it is. And on Sunday I'll do a review of the fights and give me opinion and let's see if I were right or wrong. So peace out. Thanks for coming up Dale. We're going to go for a bite to eat now and um, probably a game of pool, so keep on trucking. A shout out to Stig, but you do talk utter... Ha <laughs> ha.